Welcome to The Interesting Podcast, episode number 204. This episode is with actor, stunt performer, filmmaker, and all-around awesome dude, Seth Allen Austin. He is great. We talk about him living in Hawaii as a kid, getting into martial arts at nine years old, juggling being an actor and a stunt performer, thinking he had to choose, training with Arthur Mendoza, working on video games, creating his own stuff with his wife, and so much more. Seth is a blast. I'm so excited for you to get to know him, so let's jump right into this. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 204, with Seth Allen Austin. Theme song time. Going well? Going well. Up early, did an audition. Nice. Oh, no, did two auditions. That was exciting. Ooh, yeah. get it. And then, and then, yeah, and then meeting, and then now I'm here with you. Right on. Are you a morning person? I do it. Okay. <laughs> and I think the older I get, I just, once the when the thing wakes me up, like if the cat's like, hey, feed me, the dog's like, hey, I have to go, like, I'm up. Okay, okay. I'm up. I'm moving around, you know. That's a good skill to have. I do it. If yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's those mornings you wake up and you're like, I, like, what am I going to do? Usually the answer is go back to sleep. But yeah. if, I, if I wake up and I'm like, okay, I have to do an audition. I have to do this thing. Then getting up is much more manageable. I, I've always, I think since birth, been programmed for the night owl life. So mornings, just not. I don't, I'm a sunset guy, not a sunrise guy. I think I was a sunset guy and then i became a sunrise guy mm. um and it might also be because there's just not as many people up in the morning right? that's true the phone's not going off i feel like i'm i'm my most artistic in the morning just because because like all the to-dos of the day they aren't there yet oh good point and i'm like oh man no one's calling me like i don't wake up and my phone <laughs> hasn't blown up about a million things and i'm just like okay Okay, this is this is cool. Just just me, my cup of coffee, cats and dogs. That's it. I mean, honestly, that sounds like the life. What more do you need? It's pretty good. Yeah. So you're you're in LA now. Yeah. So you're where are you originally from? Uh, originally I was an Air Force brat. Oh, cool. Bounce around a bunch. It, yeah, not and not so much. Like, uh, um, I was born in Florida, and then nice. I moved to Hawaii. Then I then I moved to Hawaii. Lived in Hawaii for like eight years. Wow. Uh, then, I, then I moved to Arizona. Which, which couldn't have been more different. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tropical desert. Oh, my God. Even like just the, the people, I'm sure. Well, yeah, the, the the cultural things, even from Hawaii. Like, in Hawaii, I don't think I ever wore shoes, ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when I got to Arizona, I learned to wear shoes real quick because I'd, I'd go outside and play and go like, yeah, and just my feet on fire. Just cooked. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, okay, so shoes is a thing here. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> noted. Yeah, noted. And then after I graduated high school, like my parents still live in Arizona. So if anyone at like the short answer of always where's home is is Phoenix. Yeah. Okay. Small town outside of Phoenix called Gilbert. Okay. But that's the short answer. But then there's a long answer because then I like long answers. After I graduated high school, I moved to Chicago. Oh. Um, for about a year. I uh, got my my black belt in karate from a karate studio. Since a sharky. Bam. I know your stuff. Search. I know your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Since a Sharky and the whole sideswipe and Sharky family is man, you know, yeah, so a lot of who I am because of 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 that that group, that family. And then I went to New Mexico because I was like, I guess people, I guess people go to college. Maybe I should go to college or something. And uh, college was not for me. But the short time I was in college, I went to the University of New Mexico. Okay. And uh, to to show how much I didn't know about college. Like I, I was, I forget. I, I was talking to my buddy about this the other day because I, I've always known I wanted to do something in in, in the entertainment industry. Yeah. Um, it was just like like my my uh, my father, my mother, and my sister are all have their doctorates in in. Dude. So they're all very academic, very smart, and I'm the artist, you know. But but on the on the same hand, you know, I'm going to college and like, well, what do you want to do? You know, you go to college, you got to like, I guess, sign up for something, right? 
And I go, oh, you know, maybe I'll uh, learn to edit trailers. Okay. Right. And, why not? Uh, why not, right? And the now me, if I were to have spoken to the then me, would have said, well, then maybe you should go to film school, not, <laughs> not general university, right? Maybe commit. Yeah, maybe maybe do the thing. And I was like, nah, I'm just going to go. My sister went to the University of New Mexico, and they had a an Amigo Amiga scholarship. So I got in. Oh, cool. Her because she went, and she taught there. Nice. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to, um, you know, I'll go there. And the classes I took were like uh, interpretive dance, tumbling, which wasn't something that what, like just because I was like, ah, sounds fun, even though I was already very good at tumbling. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I could I, do this. <laughs> basically, I'm just using college as a as a gym membership now. And I, you know, like math, my science was like astronomy. I had some media class, which I, I never touched a computer or an editing program. And I remember thinking, like, how long is this going to take before I start doing the thing I actually want to do? Yeah. The age old college question. Or even like I'm like, it doesn't seem that hard. Like I I have you know like a, a Final Cut Express on my computer. Can't you just show me how to do that better? Yeah, right. <laughs> Again, now me would have been like, maybe you should go to film school. Go to the place where they do that. <laughs> yeah, uh, but then uh, I got like a string of sideswipe shows, uh, doing cool. shows, at the Navy Exchange. Oh, dude. So which was which was awesome to go and perform for. Uh, you know, the service men and women and their families on, on the cruise. And we went to, we had a, where did we go that first time? We started in Istanbul, which I don't know if there's a base in Istanbul, but, you know, just so happened there was another show in Istanbul. That is far. That is, that's pretty far. <laughs> um, we went to Istanbul and then we ended up going to like Italy, Spain, Greece uh, was, I think, our Navy exchange shows. And then we went back to istanbul to do another completely separate from that tour show oh. uh and then we and then we went home and then obviously that trip made me miss a lot of school so i had to drop the semester oh sure i was like oh boo-hoo oh no <laughs> <laughs> good trade good trade yeah, i'd say <laughs> yeah, it's just fine. and then um and then after driving that semester i did like uh, the online school thing which yeah, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have gotten their education from that and have done really great things, but again, wasn't for me. Sure. And I was like, why am I leaving this thing I want to do, which is perform to do this thing, which I've told myself in my brain I'm supposed to do, which is go to college. And I went, that doesn't make sense. So I, I even had to tell my mom, hey, I'm just not going to go to college, period. I'm just not going to do that. It was a very, for me, a built up scary conversation. Uh-huh, of course. And uh, my mom did two things. One, she said, well, of course you have talent. Which was very, very supportive. And like the, whoo, you know, the, wow, that could have been way worse. Uh, and then she also, being a business professional, said, what's your plan? Ah. So I had to present to her this plan my, of, of how I will attain success. And she said, what's your plan B? And I remember telling her, uh, I'm not going to do a plan B because that will distract me from plan A, which even that in my mentality has changed throughout the years. I don't think it's as black and white as having a plan A or plan B. I think a little, a little different, you know. But then that brought me back to, that brought me to California, which then I went on the Britney Spears Circus Tour, went around with Britney Spears for a year, came back to California, then went to Vegas, did a show in Vegas for about six months. And then back to California, and I've been here ever since. That's not a bad journey so far. Nah, it's I'm I'm well aware that my journey is unique compared to a lot of people, and I'm very grateful for it. Yeah, I mean, there's a million ways to do it, right? So, in my opinion, the more different, the better story there is. I'm into it. Yeah, I love it. I got to go back to Hawaii though, because I've never been. How old were you when you got there to when you left? I was I was uh, one to uh, to nine. Wow, that's like super formative years oh yeah oh yeah oh. Uh, like a lot of my development there and actually me and my wife went back to hawaii uh for a vacation just slightly before covid like i don't know 2018 2019 like that and i remember i chalked it up i was like wow i haven't like been here in hawaii i've been at the airport on the way to uh to guam for more navy shows but i haven't been like in hawaii for 20 years dude and i was like you know i think I think if I just like Google Maps my old elementary school, 
I think I can find my old house. Did you? I did. I did. Oh, cool. And I was like, whoa, how trippy. And like, <laughs> it, was, it was a little, it was, it was a little difficult to find. I did have to call my sister and be like, what, what street was it? And she's, oh my God, she's a brilliant person. She like, she's like, blah, 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 blah. So even now I don't know the name of the street. Right. <laughs> she's got her doctorate, Seth. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> she's, she's, she's the smartest person I know. Very, very smart. But there was the house. I found it. And like, you know, they made modifications to it, which like kind of threw me off the path a little bit. But I'm like, oh, yeah. But once I once I like settled and looked at it, I went, oh, yeah, that's it. So very proud of my my memory for finding that. And you're right. Like all my formative, formidable years growing up was was there. That's so interesting because from I, I haven't been there yet. But from what I understand, it's its own sort of solitary ecosystem, mm -hmm. you know, where there's a certain way of life. There's a certain people where it's very different from the mainland. So to have your younger years there and then right before like middle school years, a very different environment. Yeah. Very, very different. Well, yeah. Extremely. Even like you know, climate. Alone, yeah. <laughs> very, very different. But those years are so fluid anyway. Like I'm. That's true. I'm unaware of how old you are, but like, man, high school felt forever ago. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, then, <laughs> and when someone tells me the exact year, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was forever ago. Yeah. Time is weird. And like besides like my body hurting more, I don't know. <laughs> and then I, I see like like uh, there's a high school right by my house and I'll see the kids walking. I'm like, no, those aren't high schoolers. Those are children. Yes. Those are babies, you know, and I'm and then I I know I'm turning old when like I, I feel like I have old person thoughts of like, you know, well, back in my day, we just looked older. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what it was. That's it. That's all. That's all it is. I'm I'm with you. Yeah. I, I graduated high school in 2009. Oh, okay. Okay. And I'm like, okay, all right. 2009 was, oh, dear God, that was a long time ago. When I realized I missed my like first two high school reunions, I went, two? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, I did. Huh. Time that? just keeps going, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so you said you always wanted to be a performer. Do you remember like a moment? Was it always acting or was it, where where was your head at as far as that goes? I, I always think of it as like, it was a big cone that's been like narrowed down to a finer and then kind of reopened back up. But like, yeah, when I was a kid, I, I always loved being the center of attention or like the, uh, you know, if like the mood was bad to do something funny, you know, uh, to the, no better way to get out of an awkward situation than, than to make someone laugh. Yep. You know? Yep. And even that, like, I remember when my like mom and dad would take me to the movies at the end of the movie, they'd play the credits and there'd be that little concrete section in between like the first row seats and the actual screen. Uh huh. Yep. I would always go to that little concrete section and just start dancing. Amazing. <laughs> like I know what I was doing, just dancing for the sake of dancing. Just wanted to be up. Just, just, just go for it. And and so like, you, so like, even from then, I was like, yeah, like some something was guiding me that way. But having parents that are very academic and doctors, they, they, and definitely not from LA, right? Because I feel like yeah. <laughs> industry LA parents are like their their eyes are all like instinctually very open to like oh maybe we can cultivate this child's talent where growing up with military doctor parents that's just not a thing not a thought oh maybe we should enroll him in acting class you know like every which is which is cool and bad because it uh uh gave me like i i decided everything right like, it was a choice you were making as opposed to something put on you which which what exactly which lets me know this is really what i wanted to do yeah, sure. No one ever, no one ever went like, "Go do that," you know. I just, I just naturally found my way here. That's better because you don't have the added pressure of somebody else putting something on onto you. It's your own thing. Yeah, and I've, you know, I've, I've taught karate uh, throughout the years a lot, and there'd be like some of the kids and their parents are like, "You're doing karate," you know, or whatever. And I'm like, I don't think your kid wants to do karate. I don't right. <laughs> And the you know the industry LA parents like oh and then we're gonna I'm like I don't think your kid wants to do that maybe ask them <laughs> yeah, or just like I don't know just let them do just yeah <laughs> just be just you find it what do you want 
that. Okay, great. Exactly. Acknowledge them as a person. Well, then, and then another thing, instead of like, once I learned I really wanted to do it, and my mom went, oh, you really want to do it, huh? And I go, yeah. She goes, good, you do it. There you go. And and it made me go, like, yeah, and it made me go, oh, if I really want to do it, it's up to me. Yeah. They, they helped me plenty, plenty. But definitely growing up, they gave me fantastic lessons of like, if you really want it, you're going to put the work into it, not just to do it, not just like to be good at the thing. Yeah. But to make sure you get there, you know? Yeah. And, and at the time it was like karate and martial arts and going to the tournaments. And my mom paid for my tournaments. Nice. Uh, it came to the point where she goes, do you really want to do this? And I go, uh, yeah, I really want to do this. She's like, what do you want? I was like, I guess I want to win. She's like louder. I'm like, oh, I want to win. <laughs> And then once I once I vocally went, you know, like, I want to win. She's like, good. Then you're paying for your own tournaments and you're paying for your own flights out there. Look at her. I was like, oh. And I went, you hunting doctor. Making me take ownership of my path. <laughs> Why can't you just enable me? <laughs> right. <laughs> what a great mom. That's very smart. Cultivating the artist, cultivating the person as opposed to like giving homework. Well, I, yeah. And especially like within the business realm of it because you you know as a <laughs> as a an actor and performer yourself right people mm -hmm. say this all the time man you gotta have like a really thick skin like the amount of, the amount of rejection you go through right mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. and right now i just feel like i'm kind of callous to it you, you've been in here a lot you learn and don't get me wrong i still like you know hold some auditions more special than others and i have to totally myself, have to remind myself don't do that you know why uh-huh mess it up you hold it too mm -hmm. special, you're gonna mess it up. This ain't the Super Bowl. This is practice. Just do practice, you know. Exactly. Uh, yep. And uh, but she, you know, to to have that thick skin, and so you got to really want it. It's true. And and not the just be good at acting because there's tons of talented people out there. Oh yeah. It's, it's kind of the uh, the boring business part that mm -hmm. you don't be good at too. Yep. Mm -hmm. When did when did you start training in martial arts? Uh, uh, when, when I was nine, Whew. when I moved to Arizona is when I started my, my first official training in martial arts. Uh, my sister beat me up. Nice. And I need to learn to defend myself. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, so I, I joined the same karate school, uh, she went to in Arizona and we did American Kempo. Nice. Did you like it? Did you, did you take to it quick? You know, there's always there's always two sides to every story. You know? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I I did like it, but I was also a child, right? <laughs> yeah. d depending on the temperature of the breeze, uh, I, w I wanted to quit or I wanted to be in it, you know. Mm -hmm. And and I just had these ups and downs. And another manipulative move of my mother, which <laughs> which I gotta thank her for, is uh, she would she would go. Whenever I'd bring up the, I want to quit. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to quit. She go like, okay, well, let's just get to the end of your contract. Nice. Sound like month contracts, you know? No, like within the week, I'd forget that I wanted to quit. To begin. <laughs> yeah. so instead of giving in to me, it's just like, all right, well, when you get to the end of your contract, then 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 we'll we'll re revisit this topic. And I was like, okay. Oh, yeah, good. God. <laughs> See, cool. <laughs> okay, I mean that's a better tactic than being like you want to quit, and she just points behind her, and your sister's there punching her fist. You're yeah. like, oh, oh. Right, right. <laughs> right, 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 right. The the violence, <laughs> got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Def defense. Remember why we did this? Bruises hurt. Got it. That's right. When when did that when did that switch kind of turn to be like competitive at it? Uh, let's see. I I had already gotten my black belt. Um, in Kempo. Cool. Uh, and and then we went to a tournament in Minnesota called the Diamond Nationals, nice. which is which is like one of the largest tournaments in the world for like uh, this the the sport karate organization called NASCA. And I went there, and the only thing I did decent in was sparring. Nice, uh, and because that's you know we actually had a, a pretty good fighting school in Arizona, but I didn't really like fighting. So I did like, I did the forms and man, just like, I wish I knew more to know that I should have been more embarrassed by, <laughs> by how bad I lost. Um, but I lost pretty bad. 
uh, <laughs> like, like, forms and, div- and divisions where it's like, that's not even, you're not even in the right division. You, uh, man. Uh, but then I would see like the, the top tier competitors. A lot of those competitors are out here in LA now, Yeah, you know, have grown up uh, like in the stunt industry, just still being like phenomenal athletes and performers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But then going into this like focus of what I want to do with my life, right? Like I, I see these performers and I'm like, oh my gosh, like they're performing. Yeah. You know, like they're, um, they're not just doing uh, karate in a, a purely like uh, pure are the moves way. Like, right. Especially with like XMA and uh, sport karate and the flipping and the acrobatics and the music mm-hmm. put into it there was just this like level of showmanship where I was like, holy cow, like, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Uh, And, and so then that tournament really boosted me to start really want, like, I just went to that tournament because I wanted to go on a road trip. um, Right. (laughs) I never, I never liked competing. I was like, eh, I was like, in my head, I was like, I'm good enough. Like, I don't need to prove it. And then, and then when I got to Minnesota, I was like, wow, I'm not good at all. (laughs) <laughs> but, but like instead of like taking that as a shot to my ego i was like whoa but that i want to do that yeah it's inspiration yeah it was inspiration totally and i just uh from there started like practicing that stuff and practicing practicing my my brother luke Brodlick, he started going to this he, he's in uh arizona as well but he started going to sharky's karate in, oh that's how okay uh, i wondered yeah. i was like how'd you link up with him because he's not in arizona yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, so he, but they would go to every tournament, right? And there was there was a Discovery Channel documentary, uh, called called XMA. It starred Matt Mullins, uh, Mike Mike Chat, and had uh, had uh, Sensei Sharky in there. Cool. And and also I also had Craig Henningsen in there. And I remember we you know we saw this documentary. We were we were at those tournaments. Uh, Mike Mike uh had his camps uh XMA camp at the U.S. Opens in Florida. And we'd go there and we we started getting private lessons. And Luke originally uh, did a private lesson with Sensei Sharky. And Sensei Sharky was like, well, you're, you, you have the talent to be flipping. You want to flip. So you're going to go, you're going to go with Craig, you know? So he started learning, with Craig, which was like the absolute right fit. And then I went with Sensei because cool. I was, I was not very talented at flipping, which, you know, again, I could have been really hard on myself, but I went, okay, well, I'm not talented at flipping, but I still want to do this. Let me get like really good at traditional forms. Sure. And which is like, you know, the, like very much like Daniel San from the karate kid. Like uh-huh. very, like if, if you have an image of what karate is in your head, that's what I was like, let me get good at. And I went with sensei and sensei was a great man, even, even performance wise, just great lessons of having me perform. And then, uh, and then through that, I went to like the summer camps and I just started going and going and going and going and going and then caught the eye of uh, Matt Mullins, who put me on uh, the sideswipe teams and which eventually got me out of college. <laughs> gotcha. OK, that's a pretty cool path. Yeah, I, it was cool because I, I before I ask anybody to come on my show, I do like three weeks of research. I do everything like I go in and uh, there was a lot of cross contamination between you and Ross Constam. Yeah, I was we like, have, oh, we have, oh. So, we, so he's uh, Ross is from Virginia, you mm-hmm. know, and I'm and I'm from Arizona. But we did the same thing. Yeah, so we would go to to Sensei in in Naperville and and train, and then we'd meet up at the tournaments. Yeah, yeah. so cool. What a small world. It's it's small, and then I forget how many Sharkies people are out here. Yeah, it's like it seems like a rite of passage almost. He like trains you guys up and then ships you off to the entertainment industry. <laughs> well, yeah, he's a little. He's he's like a he's a talent hub now. Like he's yeah, just, send him out. Send him out. Next next batch is ready. Right. This one's uh, flipping. This one's forms. <laughs> and and like at all ages now too, because you have you know uh like I think like the the pioneers of of Mike and Matt coming out here and yeah. Not only with acting and stunts, but you know, uh, not only stunts, but but acting as well. Yeah, uh, and then and then it trickled down to us, and now there's kids coming out. We're like, you know, just because my my life and my involvement's here, I'm not as involved in the school. Sure, there's kids. They're like, oh yeah, this is a Sharky's kid too, and I'm like, they are. <laughs> How? <laughs> I don't I don't know that person, and, and that's on me, you know, sure. but not, not being involved in the school. But then I see them do what they do, and I go, oh yeah, cool. 
Right. Cool. That makes sense. I get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the old sharky flip. <laughs> Precisely. Precisely. How'd you get into stunts then? And like, was that intentional? Um, yeah, yeah, yes and no. So, you know, when I, with all that martial arts training yeah, and, and, and then, um, with, with, with Matt, with Mike, with, uh, the, the guys who moved out with me, uh, Brennan Hewer and Donald Mills, uh, with those guys and, and you know, Ross and everything like the, our group was already headed towards stunts. Sure. Right. And so it was very easy. Um, it was more easy. I wouldn't say it's very easy, but it's more easy to, to already get your foot in that door that way. Totally. I didn't want to do stunts. Oh, you know, I, like I was, I, I wanted to act. Right. Okay. But, <laughs> uh, it was funny. My wife and, and, and like, at least when I started, I feel like there was this, uh, separation. You, you had to pick a lane and it was bad to let either side knew you could do both things. Oh, so, sure. So like, if, you know, I'm an actor and I'm telling another actor, I do stunts, then your credibility as an actor goes down. And, right, and then that's what they think of you as. They're like, "Well, you're the stunt guy," you know. And then, and then, and then when they give you phone calls, it's not, "Hey, I want you to play this part." It's, "Hey, can you stunt coordinate my, my, my short film?" And it's oh like, yeah. It. I I understand cultivating relationships, but ah, I can also do this. <laughs> right, you saw me that way, but yeah. Okay, okay, I get it. And then vice versa. When you were a stunt person, you said, "Oh, I also act." Now the stunt industry goes, oh well, they actually want to be an actor, so they're not going to put in their full effort into stunts. They're not going to hit the ground as hard. They're not going to, you know, do do their job. Right. They're going to be more protective of their body, which is not necessarily what we need to sell a stunt. And and so you know, to to that extent, I was like, well, let me choose a lane. And I went, I'm I'm here to act. I'm going to do acting. And so I started turning down like all stunt opportunities. And I worked at a gymnastics studio making like 12, like what did I start? I think I started at like 950 an hour. Nice. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, working all the time and still going broke, you know. After Relatable. That, like, like, I remember just lying on the floor and at the time my girlfriend, it's my wife now, uh, but is sitting on the floor laying down looking at her ceiling just thinking about the red numbers in my bank account the true motivation of an actor yeah, just going like oh my god what am i gonna do <laughs> i guess i could sell plasma uh you know there you go there's options <laughs> yeah there's, there's, i can do all this stuff and then she goes what are you doing why are you being an idiot why are you being an idiot she's like go do stunts go do stunts and yeah. i'm like no and i tell her the whole argument and she's like that's that sounds stupid just tell people this is what you do you know? Yeah. And I was like, okay, good thing I listened to her. Cause man, my, <laughs> my bank account got to where I could breathe and like buy cheeseburgers again. That was super yeah. <laughs> Rent wasn't like an anxiety attack every month, you know? Yeah. Um, and more importantly, most of my opportunities in acting started popping up because of stunts. Oh, you know, cool. Yeah. I, I have gotten a lot of parts because they, they needed a stunt actor. And, right. and, so like, and again, my whole view of like pick a lane, that's kind of gone away now too. Yeah. Where studios are looking for like, if the, if this part needs the actor to do action, they want someone who can do everything. Yeah. And, I, and I'm speaking of like the working actor, not necessarily. Totally. The, the, the names or the celebrities they are, they're in their own. Yeah, they're their own category. They're in their own category. Yeah, but like for the working actor, like, oh, now that you can do the physicality and the acting, yes, you are more in demand. Yes, you. Yeah. In here, and then vice versa on stunts, and especially with motion capture, right? Yeah. To be a, not only to be able to do the stunts, but to perform it, to be a creature, to to look like. To look convincingly look like you're cold while falling down. Right. Yeah. You know, um, you had to act. You had to be able to, uh, and, and stunt coordinators were starting to go like, what do you mean you can't say a sentence, you know? And, and <laughs> guys are, I think, 
more and more going into acting classes because that's just something and i recommend it like i'm like just you know, even just get like like the basis of a technique down right just, just get like like the first quarter of a class or whatever down just so you have something to go okay yeah you, know, uh, you don't need all like you don't need all this training but you can say packages here boss and, and not feel super self-conscious with it right you know? <laughs> uh, it becomes a skill set of uh, having both and as opposed to before where they tried to categorize you separately. Yeah. And I, you know, I and I don't, I, this might be a thing. I don't know, but I know on like some of the stunt websites, maybe even on like, you know, LA, LA casting or whatever. Uh, you, yeah, you're right. You go through and you mark your, like your skill sets. And mm -hmm. if you're like, primary, primarily like a stunt person, you can still check off the box of acting. You're yeah. Like, By the way, I say words. Like, yeah. Right. <laughs> we need that. Yeah. I'm multifaceted. Yeah, I can speak English. <laughs> right. <laughs> if, if you need English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Passably. Passably. Yeah, yeah. Want to dub me over later? That's fine, too. There you go. I love that. I love that you didn't limit yourself. And again, see, having a wife that knows what's up. Yep. I almost did. A strong, a strong partner who calls you a moron when you mm -hmm. are. That's that's what I want. And that's what I got. Yeah. Do you, when did you start training with Arthur Mendoza? Because you are now the second person I've had on who's trained with him. Who's the first? It's a guy named Justin Tate. I know Justin. You know Justin? He graduated uh, way before me. And I, what did I go to? Uh, my wife, Jenny's m uh, more acquainted with him. Uh, but yeah, I went to one of his things. I was like, oh. Yeah, and so Justin Tate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he recommended this book to me. The purple one. The purple yep. one. Yeah. One of the that's best acting books I've ever read. And that's uh, uh, Arthur. Yeah. Put that together. He did. That's how and, I know Arthur through and, Justin and this. And I was like, oh, so when I researched you, I'm like, look at this. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, I've been going to Arthur for what I always base it off of how long me and my wife have been together. So I think I've been with Arthur for like seven years. Dude. How'd you yeah. find him? Through her. Yeah. Through, through Jenny. I almost didn't go to Arthur. Really? Yeah. Be because of Jenny. <laughs> oh, yeah. How come? She told you the truth? Jenny's very confident in her technique. Oh. <laughs> very confident in it. goals to the point where it didn't sound like she was selling me to come to class <laughs> it sounded like she was shaming me to from uh, because i went to other classes <laughs> right. and i went at a, you know in my head i was like well looks like i'm not going to arthur but then right. uh, <laughs> i had already done um a little bit of strasburg mm -hmm. uh, didn't didn't work for me i completed an entire meisner program uh, you know, did the two year program, which which I really clicked with. I like. Did you? I, okay. I liked it. Yeah. Um, and and I got through that, and then Jenny, you know, shamed me for my other uh, <laughs> trainings. And I was right. Like, we'll see if I go to class. But then I went to one of my Meisner techniques is um, master classes, and the teacher there, mind you, this is a Meisner master class. Right. And we're doing the scene. And the teacher holds up a Stella Adler book and starts, as as I feel like a lot of acting teachers who are put on a stage do, start reaming whoever is on stage at the moment for <laughs> what they are doing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and she starts reaming these people and talking about Stella. And Stella has a whole chapter on wardrobe and, and, and all this stuff. And then that's when, for me, with Jenny, I went, Okay, well, I don't know why you're talking about Stella when I'm in a Meisner act acting class, right? You know, uh, but here we are. You are doing this. We're talking about Stella, and I went. Ugh. Regardless of how Jenny put it, Arthur is a direct protege of Stella Adler, right? He like a lot of people went to Stella, but Stella only taught so many people how to teach, right? And she taught Arthur how to teach, and so I went, okay, well, so it was, it was actually the Meisner teacher that made me go, okay, well, let me just go to, right. <laughs> let me just go to Arthur. And I went to Arthur and, you know, I'm sure it's like a, a lot of actors, like if, if they switch techniques or go to a different class, it is semi like starting all over again, you mm -hmm. know? And, and like, and that teacher might find a whole new, cluster of things that your old teacher didn't 
hasn't found before or like or some stuff that you hear over and over and over again that you're like yeah i get it that's a thing of mine yeah uh, um and arthur after a while because it is like uh he he speaks like yoda sometimes that old wisdom you're right but where i'm like i and eventually i would just go mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. you understand yep <laughs> totally like, locked I, I I have no idea what, <laughs> what what you said. I I'm not ready for this information yet. And then with time, it came through. Or like eventually seeing like the next group of people go through the the technique exercises, and I was like, oh, got it. Oh, now I get it. But the important part of how Arthur teaches is he, whether it's intentional or, or uh, unintentional. He doesn't necessarily give you all the information for the assignment. Oh, okay. And so he he withholds or he just doesn't elaborate or something. Um, because as a lot of actors are, you go there and you, you try to do the exercise right. Yeah. You try to get it right. And that isn't or how, how Arthur teaches. That isn't what the technique is about because there is no right. It's art, subjective. It's subjective, and the art is in the discovery of it. Yeah, the truth. The truth, and a lot of people, and that truth will, that truth will, even within like a, a single vessel, that truth will change as the vessel changes. Yeah, you know, like again, um, college age me not knowing to go to film school, and then this me going like well maybe that kid should have gone to film school but that's only because i have now all this new life experience and information yeah behind me and so that will all change so arthur's like he you know he's not you you shouldn't be trying to get it right just here's what i prepared you know right and, and like some people are so off base and i've been <laughs> off, so off base or like or like uh what we all do is we all try to be the best oh yeah right? Right? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll try to be like I'm gonna I'm gonna explain the most complicated imaginary thing ever. And then you finish and you're like, that was brilliant. And everyone's like, I have no idea what the hell you just said. <laughs> and then what's it called? The uh the kiss method, keep it simple, stupid. Uh-huh. You know, sometimes just take smaller bites. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then uh one, one little pitch on one more pitch on Arthur. Is Arthur is the only one that I've gone to who hasn't uh tried to sell himself after the training. Oh, interesting. Which I was like, "Oh, yeah." And this really hit me like in a martial arts standpoint too. Yeah. You either know what you're doing or or you don't. And of course, we're like, you know, it always it always helps to have a coach, of course. Totally. Like, you know, this this town besides the the artistry behind it is also a business sure and not only the business on screen or on set but like even several stages back you know you you go to an acting class and you do the entire acting class and when they're done i feel like a lot of teachers out here will eventually go like okay you're done with the class but every time you get an audition now you have to come in for a private lesson oh sure i charge you know i charge a lot but for you because you're a student now whatever you know right uh, but then you got to pay for private lessons all the time and then if you book the game, it's like well when you get the material then meet with me again and we're going to do uh you know you'll pay me for sessions to do all of the uh b- book work just to do for this role and then some you know we even go far as enough as like well you need me on set so just you know put it in your writer to to get me on set and then you become like you know, th- then a lot of the art isn't yours anymore. Right. And then you, and then you are so reliant on having this, this hand holder with you to, to get you through what you're supposed to be trained to do. Yeah. And so Arthur's like, like he, he has a great story. Uh, he, he was a, a Benicio del Toro's teacher. And I might be getting it. He, he, you know, like when you hear the story a million times, even you. Yeah, start- Sure. Around. Gets a little flavor. <laughs> yeah, but I, but I think how it goes is uh, uh, Benicio is going to audition, and he's like, "You want to come with me?" And Arthur, you know, around around the lines of saying, "Like, uh, like you, you want me to hold your hand the whole way? Is that is that what you want me?" To do? <laughs> I'm trying to be a piece. 
yeah. <laughs> that's something different. Uh, a little more flavor. <laughs> a, little, a little bit more flavor in that, yeah. But like, you want you want me to hold your hand too? Is that what you want me to do? Well, no. He goes, do you know what you're doing or don't you? Go do it. You know. Yeah. And then I think Benicio did fine. I think so. You know, I, I might I might have heard of him. <laughs> and also, like from a martial arts standpoint, there is a big thing about lineage. And to have the acting teacher that you click with be a direct lineage from Stella Adler, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Arthur was a, a dancer. And so my uh, my wife is a dancer and she explains it really good. She's like, when you when you teach ballet, and she heard me, she'd be like, wrong. Like, uh, okay, close <laughs> enough, all right. She's not going to listen to this, Seth. <laughs> I'm close. I'm, this is true. <laughs> but like, okay, so like a style of ballet, right? Yes. There's, there's many styles of ballet, but like sure. the style of ballet, it's so strict in how you do it. There is no like, you know, but sometimes this feels better. So do this. There's like, nope, this is the way to do it. Right. It is technical. That, it is very technical. And that's what Stella's technique is. It's technical. Yeah. And, and Arthur teaches the technique as Stella had it, you know, as it was brought, as it came from Stanislavski to her, her to to arthur here's what it is there's no like okay but then use all this other right stuff. <laughs> like in this one in this one instance maybe do some sense memory no 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 right but purely from the imagination uh uh here's what it is you know and you go you know, and, and again it's a martial artist or a dancer you're like yes yes it's okay got this the technique and then once you learn all the rules and are solidified in the rules then you can break the rules yeah. But if it's always so fluid, at least for me, if it's always so fluid, then I'm like, oh, well, now I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I feel the same way. I, I find that I'm more creative within restraints. Absolutely. Yeah, I like it better. And then the plate's too big, right? You go, like, well, where do I start? Totally. And then you're frozen by possibility because there's a million things you can do, so you end up doing nothing. Yeah. It's like looking for something to stream on Netflix. Like, yeah, you just... Right? Yeah, you spent 45 minutes looking. You're like, actually, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm tired. <laughs> Do you remember then if you moved to LA, you're doing a bunch of stunts, but you wanted to get into acting? Do you remember your first like professional acting gig coming from stunts? Uh, like coming from stunts where like I eventually like left stunts or or, or when you're doing because I know you did a lot of episodes of Agents of Shield, but I also know you did a really good job on SWAT. Mm -hmm. That was fun. And so it felt to me, just from a viewer standpoint, with SWAT you had way more acting involved than you would have had just like doing a get a gag. Yeah, yeah, Did yeah. Did feel yeah. that way for you? Yeah. So I, I, you know, I wasn't like behind the scenes on SWAT where I saw the inner workings, but I'm pretty confident. When I went to audition for SWAT, I auditioned as an actor. Cool. Like, like, you know, I had to, I had to go in the room. I had to do my thing. I auditioned. It was, it was an acting audition, right? Yeah. And, uh, and then the assistant to the coordinator, the stunt coordinator, Cassie Lee, Min uh, Cassie Lee Minnick, who's awesome. Uh, I'm pretty sure they went like, you know, they were looking through the potential people because they knew these actors had some stunts to do. And so stunt, some say like, oh, well, maybe we got double this guy or not, or let's look for a double for this guy or something, you know, and they, they came about to me. And then I, I, like in my head, they went, oh, that's Seth. Yeah, yeah, no, just hire him. He can do it. <laughs> yeah. he, can, he can do everything. We can, we can literally stop thinking about Seth because we hire him. Right. We can hit this man with a car. I know for a fact. Yeah, well, yeah, he'll he'll be good. Um, which then I thought was really funny because she called me up and uh, she said, "Do you, you know, basically I, I'm supposed to ask this, but do you want a stunt double?" Which my retort was, and I don't know if it surprised her because then again, this like lane, pick a lane, right? Yeah, I was like, "Well, what's the stunt?" And it's like, <laughs> ooh, ooh, now now we're in that that realm of like, is he going to take the stunt seriously? Is it going to be hard? You right. Know? Uh, but I think my my overall answer was the right one. And if it wasn't, eh, who cares? I still got the job, right? Yeah, you got the job. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but my overall answer was like, like if if production is willing to get me a what what is the stunt? How dangerous is it? Sure. Uh, and it's not that I'm afraid to do it. It's I'm already getting what I want. Right. I'm I, I am already coming on the show. It's my face. It's my character. I'm acting in it. Yeah. Right? I'm doing my thing. So why would I steal a stunt? That could be super cool for someone who wants to do stunts real. Ooh, right? good point. Why, why would I want to take money out of their pocket by me hogging that spotlight? You know? Yeah. I'm already hogging the spotlight. It's a stunt double. 
they're, <laughs> right. I got my part. You know, they're going you know, to cut. It's, it's, it's going to look like me. They're going to be like, yeah, something great. You yeah. Uh, uh, and I'm like, acting. It wasn't me. It was right. <laughs> magic. It was this person instead. And I was like, but if it's like a little thing, you know, a little, little bit thing, then I'm not going to be, then I, then I won't be a diva about it. And like, yeah, I can do the simple thing sure. and, and, and save production the money. And at the time I thought it was, I knew I was like, I, like I broke a door down uh, with a battering ram and it was, it was glass, but like, I'm wearing like full SWAT gear. And I'm like, yeah. No, it's a thing. So like, I'm like, I'm in no danger. I can do that. And actually that sounds fun. Yeah. Why not? And then the, uh, the car thing is like, you know, the car is just going to like be parked or something. And then the door is going to open. And you're going to be hit by the door. Uh-huh. And I was like, Oh, I can be hit by a door. And then, uh, and then when I got there, it was, uh, nah, the car, <laughs> it's coming past me. Then he opens the door and then, and then me doing it. I was like, Oh, this is actually a little scarier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's a car coming towards me <laughs> from, from behind. You know? Even better. <laughs> like pretty much like just, just hit your mark and let the driver do the rest. And uh, the, the driver was a, a, a pro named Logan holiday. What a name. Dude, what a name. Uh, <laughs> but just man, uh, even within stunts, you know, there's like different clicks of specialties of stunts, you know. You yeah, got, totally. You got fighters, you got car people, you got horse riders, you got mm-hmm. people who like do scuba diet, you, know, you, got, you got a whole bunch of stuff, right? And man, like I, I don't want to do anything with cars. I'm like, no, <laughs> I drive like a grandma. I'm, uh, I've seen the margin of error. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm like, my wife's like, be aggressive. I'm like, no, no, they'll, they'll slow up. Yeah, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. We got tune skis. We're good to go. Yeah. I, I left with plenty of time, uh, <laughs> right. but him just like, boom. And I was like, wow, that, that dude is so good at his job. Yeah. What a pro. So good. Ooh. Um, but, but yeah, so all that, um, that job and that, that story of, uh, me not wanting to steal, you know, out of a stunt guy who this could be really beneficial for him. Was it more nervous getting hit by a car or doing a shirtless scene on animal kingdom? Uh, the car. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, the, the sideswipe, the team sideswipe. Um, uh huh. We were, were we were pretty known for taking our shirts off. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> it's part quite, of it. Quite frequently, and <laughs> um, I like to say, like my mentor on the team, Matt Mullins, uh, he has eliminated shame out of <laughs> out of a lot of what I do. Uh, I mean, that's good. <laughs> really good. Oh my god. Another skill. Another skill. Yeah. yeah. P.S. Uh, no shame. So whatever. Yeah. You yeah. Need. No shame. That's one of the boxes you can check. <laughs> shame. Uh, yes or no. No. No shame here. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the shirt off in Animal Kingdom. That was, that was fine. That was cool. Yeah. It's yeah. a it's a good it's a great show. It is a great show. I was a big fan of it. Yeah. How many takes did you get? Do you remember? Because TV moves fast. TV moves really fast, and that was one of the first ones that made it to air. So my so uh, backtrack a little bit. One of the very first acting things I ever got. I did the uh, the la cliche of uh you know um telling people all right i filmed it it's awesome it's coming on on this time no (laughs) just completely eliminated from the final edit and just going oh oh so now i've that was a good lesson to you know not count your chickens before they're hatched yeah i'll send you the download you Let me watch it first. Let me watch. Yeah. It. Uh, make sure it's there, or if it's any good. Because if it's not good, uh, also don't watch it. Yes, agreed, agreed. Uh, <laughs> and that and that moves fast. How many takes we do? Not much. We yeah we we moved. Uh, but then back to Arthur's training, right? Oh yeah. Like they move so fast, and as like a uh, uh, a co-star, a, a very expositional monologue. Uh huh. Co-star. They don't. I think have the time to give you what to do. Oh, sure. You know, when it, as far as like activity or like to make yourself feel real and in the world. Right. Some business. Yeah, exactly. Some business. And like, I know for a fact without Arthur's training, I would have been, I don't know, just standing there. Maybe put your arm up. <laughs> which wouldn't have been super great. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be like, well, let me just like, let me just do do my technique. What's the thing? Well, right now it's it's activity. So, and, then, and even in that set, like I was like, can I see, just be, not being afraid to ask questions to like the AD or like, can, can I see where we're gonna shoot? What do I have? Yeah, and, and not not taking away from anyone's time, but being like literally just like, can you put me in my sandbox and I'll figure out how to play? Yeah, 
you know, and, and taking that time for myself to, and, you know, it, it turned out to be, you know, me just like putting my surfboard away and cleaning off the surfboard and, and starting to towel off. But then I looked like I was part of the world. Right? You did. It looked real. And my line is now. It's crazy how much business like fills out a scene, like a mechanic talking, just wiping the oil off his hands is like turns it up 10 times and just realism. It's amazing. Yep. Yep. And then not having to be told to do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's actors out there uh, who, who work just fine, who you have to build their performance. Uh-huh. You know? Sure. Well, maybe play with this. And then, and then again, this is where I go with Arthur. I'm like, but then that performance because becomes somebody else. Right. Someone else's choices. That's something like, sometimes there's not much to do or sometimes they're like, nope, all we want you to do is talk. So there's, there is no room to, to fill that much in. Yeah. But like when the opportunity's there to find that stuff, to find that in your own is like, ah, yeah, I did it. I did a thing. I acted. That real creativity. Yeah. 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 Do you, what was your first video game you worked on? The first video game I worked on that like started my career was uh, Insomniac Spider-Man. Dude. Mm -hmm. First horse out the gate. Pretty good. An another one, thanks to stunts, uh, just just launched me, you know. Uh, again, my my uh, mentor from Sideswipe, Matt, Matt Mullins, he got me on it, and he got Ross on it. Yeah. Ross is a much better acrobat than I am, so like, <laughs> he's just he's man, he just defies. He's me. just aerodynamic. Oh my gosh! And I'm more like a wrecking ball. <laughs> yeah, right. um, so I get it. I have my place. And at the time, um, how gosh, how many years ago did that game it came out? Like 2018. Is when it shipped. Yeah, but we were working on it like three or four years before that. So like at at the time, my athletic prowess was was much higher. So so I was doing quite a bit of of the the Spider Manning. Cool. But then like just just being there and watching now watching these mocap vets, uh, like like a, a Kevin Dorneman, yeah, uh, out, out there just like playing. Yeah, and I went. Whoa, because be, then, then it changed from something I like. I didn't see that on uh, on camera sets. Totally. You know? I didn't see a grown man uh, going, blam, 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 and allowing, <laughs> allowing himself, like, even the ability to say blam, 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 because it helped him because it because he had more fun doing it. Yeah. And, 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 and thus made his performance better. And knowing that, like they're like they're just taking your motion anyway, so say blam, blam, blam. Right. You know, if it, if it helps you, and, and watching watching like him him do that, and then watching like uh like Michelle Lee do that kind of stuff, I was like, whoa, okay. And then of course like the actors, like watching. Oh man. Like Yuri, Yuri Lowenthal, just I adore that man. Oh my gosh, what a sweetheart! Uh, I know. It's the worst. God, isn't it? God. It's <laughs> too. I know. It's got to be nice, handsome, and talented. Ridiculous. Yeah, his birthday was a couple of days ago. So, so It was. Yeah. So happy belated birthday. Uh, yeah. Year. But yeah, w watching them, watching them be just mocap and VO monsters. And then me going like, ooh, and finding myself just really absorbing as much as I could in, yeah. in this medium, you know? Sure. Just clicked. Yeah, just just all clicked, and because I got in through stunts and I worked it hard enough, they started, and, and then they give me like little little bits, like little you know little little breadcrumbs, and then eventually they were like, uh, this you know insomnia was like, oh Seth Seth can act, there you go, he can he, oh he can he can hang, and then you know and then it turned into like not coming in on stunt days but coming in on like vignette days, where yeah. We're just, you know, we're we're world building, but we're um, we're acting. Oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> you're doing it. How how thrilling! Like, <laughs> you know, I, I don't have to throw my body at the ground. <laughs> right. uh, amazing. <laughs> uh, and then just getting opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to do that more and more and more and more and more. And then they throw you in the HMC, and you're like, oh man, yeah, this is awesome. And then yeah, and every day is still just like new opportunities to absorb some, I just, uh, uh, 
I worked with someone on a different project uh, recently. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the and way I, of the NDA. <laughs> yes. And, and I watched how individual performed and some of the tricks this performer did that I was like, wait, you could do that? <gasps> oh. What? What? <laughs> yeah. And so, like, you know, even, even now, like me doing uh, mocap, uh, being able to pay my bills for the past like eight nearly nine years i think dude Be, you know coming to that and still learning these like what what yeah that's a thing oh my gosh right that town i'm stealing that later i am <laughs> gotta put that in my book not yeah bad. Not, yeah and i will i'll just pretend like it's old hat like we all do this yeah right? of course you know that thing you did that was nice nice i do it this way you mean you don't know what a blank is? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you you also worked on one of my favorite uh, original series, Orbital Redux. Speaking of ah, Yuri, ah, yeah, Woo! that was that was because of Spider Man. We we did a lot, you know, like uh, the acting, the mirror exercise. Right? Yeah. Well, that's what I feel like a lot of uh, Spider Man was, where I would be the body flipping, but I essentially had to learn Yuri's lines as well, or right. at least. Like, or at least like the length and the action of what she was putting on it. The timing. Yeah, like word perfect. Now a lot of it came out of my mouth was or well, nothing came out of my mouth, like blah blah blah. Basically blah 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 yeah. blah. <laughs> but knowing what he was going and doing, and then us, you know, fusing as one person. Yeah. To create this. It's it's just like, whoa. And then for over orbital redux, uh uh, we did the same thing. You know, that show was presented live Yeah, to to be able to do some of the, like, fantastically ambitious things they were doing. They were like, you know, a little smoke and mirrors. We'll have a body double. And yeah, while uh, Yuri's in the line, uh, while Yuri's, like, in, like, this close of a close-up. While he's in space. <laughs> while he's in space, saying his lines, like, I'm in the wide in uh, in, in my suit, like he's like it's all good and i'm like you have to like sync those up so they so they work that was really fun that was a really fun experience i bet i'm trying to tell everyone i know about it so i love having people who worked on it just so i can bring it up again <laughs> well and, and it's like you want them to bring it up because the the novelty of it was that it was live yeah right not, not only live but uh uh view, viewer guided right right so have, like the 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 hidden um, suggestion or something that they had to work in and they, they were just learning it right there. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. Like, how? Yeah, why, why, whoa, okay. And like, talk about the um, self floggings actors put themselves through of like, yeah, this is going to be really hard and really scary. Let's do it. Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really scary, but let's do it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I could like, totally do that. I could totally get it yeah. done. <laughs> yeah. Like actors, I think, make their careers just like standing out on a limb. Totally. Like, like, here we are. There's a there's a, there's gotta be a slight, a slight percentage of masochism in every actor, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Absolutely. They love they love putting themselves through the paces. Just like No risk, no reward, Seth. I do I do love talking to actors who make their own stuff though. And I have seen every one of your shots with guests. <laughs> All of them. Everyone, every single one that is available to watch, I've seen them. Which which one did you like? I I'll be honest, I liked a lot of them. Okay. The the Jeff Wick, you can't go wrong. The entrance with the hood slide. Yeah. You had me out the gate. I just got rid of that car too, unfortunately. Dude. Well, fortunately, it was time. It served its life. It served its time. I enjoyed that a lot. There was a Sensei Sharky cameo in that, which I thought was cool. Yep. 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 And, and a hidden matt mullins cameo in that i uh i pasted my face on matt mullins's body amazing (laughs) i love that i love i love washed ashore that legit made me laugh out loud like are you from jersey or been to jersey i've I've been to jersey (laughs) just you get it (laughs) i get it sort simple to the point yeah i i I filmed i was coordinating a, a zombie movie out in jersey and and it was like a weekend or something and i was just like i called my uh assistant coordinator i was like hey you want to just film a dumb video real quick (laughs) what i'm like mind you it was like november it looked very cold it was so cold but uh again back to the 
masochism of actors. I was like, I'm going to go in the water. You shouldn't do that. Right, right, right. I, I hear you. I shouldn't. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go in the water. You know, just, are you going to film it or not? And please do. It'd be very pointless if I went in without you filming it. Right. <laughs> that, was, that was actually, you know what a horseshoe crab is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That was the first time I saw horseshoe crabs. Yeah. Like, like someone who's never seen one before. I'm like, you know, what in God's name? is Like, I, I thought I saw dinosaurs. That is a prehistoric creature. And they're like, no, that's just horseshoe crab. It's, a, it's totally a thing. And I was like, well, the East Coast is weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it's also a title card. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, what, what, what an awful look. I mean, it's it's beautiful in its own right. right? Exactly, exactly. But, uh, definitely, yeah, it made a great title card. I'm saying, production value. A dead horseshoe crab. <laughs> yeah, what's that I really liked? Uh, I mean, who did the ADR for action in Paul Man? Oh, I did. I had a feeling. Action could have done it himself, but he was booked out. Sure, I understand. Kubo's yeah. the same way. Uh, no, he... Uh, action doesn't sound like a dog. And so that that is me trying to do his sound. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, like, you know, you grow up, you know, like, what's a dog sound like? Woof, bark, whatever. I'm like, not action. No. Nope. nope. He's got this, like, always, like, oh, oh. like I'm like, oh, what is, what is happening to you? That's just how he sounds. Oh, and like his bark sounds like he's clearing his throat to say something profound. He's got thoughts. Yeah, he's got, he's got thoughts. He's got opinion. He's he's. I I believe he's part pug, so he's uh, also v- very stubborn. They're lucky. They're cute. Yep. Oh my! <laughs> what a buddy! What a cuddle buddy! Yeah. He's the exact same way. <laughs> <laughs> I I also really liked your Saint Crispian's Day monologue. You did a really good job. Legit. Yeah. Like well done. That that was uh, Arthur Arthur coaching me. Yeah. Cool. It worked. That was really, really fun. And again, I didn't go to, I don't have a lot of like uh, theater experience or I didn't go to college where, where you were like, you know, do a play or something like that. Like the first two plays I ever did was like musicals in middle school. Sure. Know, which, you know, came and went. But as far as big pieces like, like Shakespeare or, yeah, or, you know, the entirety of Arthur Miller or Tennessee Williams, mm-hmm. uh, I have never done that. Uh, right. So like even just like sinking my teeth into those bites of like Shakespeare. Very, very grateful to to Arthur for pushing me into that. Like because I feel like like a lot of newer actors, um, like, what do I need? Like, what do you need Shakespeare for? You know, like, it's so old, it doesn't even apply. And then once you start working on it, you're like, oh, this is everything. This is the basis of all of it. <laughs> this, yeah, this is this is every story I've ever seen, but like with the most po- poetic language ever. And yeah, it's like, what is it? Shakespeare, It, I agree. It's not for like, it's not for like the uh, watching it the first time audience member. Like, right. you definitely enjoy it more with a little bit. Uh, it's like watching poker. I right. Yeah. Like, like if you watch the World Series of Poker, uh, without any knowledge of the game sure (laughs) cool man are you guys having fun your faces aren't moving i don't get it but then once you learn like how the game is played and you just start start getting a little bit of knowledge you're like oh wow this is oh this is cool i mean martial arts is kind of the same way any sort of thing where like uh, using a sword like one cut is actually seven moves in one so if you know what's going on you're like whoa Whoa. but if you don't you're like oh he's just yep like no 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 there's so much there yeah, and it, it, it goes for a lot of things, right? When like, it takes a lot of uh, expertise and training to make something look easy. Yeah, you know, I agree. Did you did you do all that in one shot, or did you cut it up the Saint Crispian's Day speech? Uh, we there there was um a lot a lot of cuts to it. Not like like I performed the speech in its entirety. Yeah, every, every every time. But one of the things like Arthur teaches is like uh is size. It took me a long time for me to uncover what his definition of like size was and like like a king has size right like beyonce has size you know uh like this just like these people who walk in the room and you're like whoa they have weight and a size. that aura that aura exactly and so for me to play try to play henry try to capture his size you know i wanted the closest the close-ups and stuff because that's that's where the money is, baby. Yeah, yeah. Like the wides, I'm like, I want 
I want to try to get that size out of this king. Yeah. Even though it's just me and like four buddies. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife did direct that though. She directed and shot it. Amazing. She is the better half with our shots with Jeff team. That's what it takes. It's team effort. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Filming yourself alone sucks. Oof. Yeah. You, you want me to film with the worst critic I know? Mm. Oh my god. I, <laughs> I, you ever get an audition where it's just one line and you're like, I I can film this by myself. Oh yeah. It's always so much harder. Uh huh. Like. Can you just literally press record? It just it just helps me so much. Yeah. <laughs> I need to not look at it. Yeah. Instead of just being in the room by myself, just being my worst critic ever. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of like the slight bit of masochism when making your things, was schooled always gonna be sock puppets? No. Okay. Whose idea was sock puppets? Mine. <laughs> okay. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that was with with my dive into the VO world. Uh-huh. Uh, I was trying. I was trying to just to, you know, I'm, I have a booth. Uh, during the pandemic, I was like, you know, it's not slowing down. Voiceover. Yeah. And I was already wanting to head this direction anyway. Uh, so then I was like, well, what better time than now? And True. You know, got myself a booth and started going at it. But school came from me trying to make my own temp reel. Oh, I love it. Before I like, you know, drop another three grand on <laughs> yeah. professionally do it. Yeah. It's like, you know, just so they can hear me, just so they can hear me. Yeah. And then I had, and then my wife did the same thing. She came up with a, a skit too. And we were like, well, let's just basically do a radio play. There you go. It's like, let's do like, you know, you do a radio play. I'll, I'll do a radio play and we'll, we'll voice all the characters in it. And like, uh, there's a, a VO teacher called the VO doctor, Bill Holm. Oh yeah. And he, and he, he put that, he put that little, uh, thought in my head of like, just do, just do a radio play. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, yeah, that sounds like more fun. So, totally. so I started writing a, vi- uh, a radio play and then Jenny's got, Jenny got hers done first. And we actually got some really good advice on it, uh, from a buddy of ours, Nushir Dalal. Oh, huh. no, she's great. I got about another one of those human beings. Right? She's Again. Talented. Just the worst. And they're nice. They say inappropriate stuff, but you're okay with it. I know. Being at you, and it's not weird. No, because they're handsome. <laughs> just what it's. Some people just have it all. Uh, yeah. Some people just have it, Dalal. It just, oh, come on. Yep. <laughs> don't enable me for that seth <laughs> i know i know a lot of of uh punters out there yeah. I, I try not to enable the punters I just, my last name is balance i can't help it, it yeah it was, it was just put there right in front of you huh? it's right You're there like, here we go here we go no i'm sorry uh, uh but he gave, he gave us good advice of like he goes what's this for is it for like a writing demo or is it for your voices because unless you're like a freak of nature talented throat voice manipulator mm-hmm. putting your voice in sequence over and over and over again pretty hard yeah for people to go like oh wow th- th- that was all the same person like they're gonna know right, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, they're gonna know and so luckily we got well not luckily uh, uh jenny was the sacrificial lamb to that critique we went, oh, okay which then for schooled made me go and and, and jenny again a a, a strong partner uh, willing to say, don't be an idiot. Went uh, like, why don't you, why don't you spread the love a little bit? You know, like, yeah, ask some more people, and and we'll make this better than what it is. And you know, I was like, no, but I want to. Uh, you're right. And so, so Jenny's in it. Uh, uh, Walt Gray is in it. Love him. Uh, his his wife uh, Libby Letlo is in Incredible. it. Incredible. Uh, who is actually our our puppet teacher? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Which this is a funny story. She goes, "Do you have a uh, a monitor?" Like, and I'm, like <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna flip around my, just gonna flip around my little guy." Yeah, that's it. Just, uh, like, just a little, a little, little, little thing. Yeah, yeah we, we can see it. The old flippy flip. Oh, just a little flip around. We'll see it. And, <laughs> and even her, she's also a don't be an idiot partner. Yep, uh, yep. And Livy's like, you know, you should get a better monitor. For this. And I'm like, Ugh, okay, whatever. I guess be professional. <laughs> and, so, and so I like, you know, take my 46 inch TV off the wall. Wow, this has an HDMI cord, so this will work. Plug it in. Oh my God, what a difference it makes. <laughs> and then even in like the reshoots of it, I'm like, oh yeah, that that TV's coming here. Like, no, 
no way in hell am I doing it with just this little guy. But the socks came in because I wanted it. Originally, I wanted it animated. And I was like, maybe it could, maybe it could just be like illustrated storyboards. You know, like it doesn't necessarily have to have motion to it. And and I cannot draw very well. And, and I know a lot of people, a lot of the animators I do know are talented and unavailable. It's like, you know, they're like, it just, you know, this is it's, it's my, it's my day off. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get it. And I went, well, what can I do? What can I do? And I was like, I can make a sock puppets. And then, and then to me, my uh, so- sock puppets enhanced my writing because I don't, I don't necessarily, that, that whole premise I came up with like in the seventh grade, <laughs> it was definitely a middle schooler's joke turned uh just just you know flushed out a little bit more and then uh and i was like i can do puppets and the puppets i was like uh i was like oh yeah this really fits and then i'm gonna mess up the show's name uh but uh walt one of his favorite shows on mtv uh was the sock puppet show amazing and, and i was like oh yeah i was like and i watched there so i'm like yeah this is it this is perfect, this is perfect. <laughs> we got it it's fantastic this is great and it actually speaking of things that you work on that you hope are good in the end school's really good I man, that was and way harder than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I bet <laughs> way harder. Like I honestly, with the sock puppets, I was like, yeah, we'll just you know don't need to make a big deal out of this. Just can't be that hard. Make it a simple thing, and then uh, oh my god, that first edit, I was like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> this know. this doesn't work at at all. Oh, no. uh, and so me going like, okay, I can make it work, but I need like some new shots to fill stuff out, which I'm sure happens to like every single production ever. Got to be right. Yeah, fingers crossed. It'd be it'd be very strange for someone to like, nope, that's it, nailed it, first time shot. Boom, okay. I can sleep. Well, yeah, I love that though. I love that you did it. I love that it came out well. I love that you shared it. Oh, I, I love it too. I actually thought the other day of a, a follow up to it, which please do isn't isn't in development, but yet. Yet. Come on, Seth. Little tease. Little tease. <laughs> Maybe people think there's more coming. The tease was, it's in my head. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, now that you're like making your own stuff, you've done VO, you've done mocap, you've done acting, you've done stunts. Do you have like a dream, like a dream role that you really want to play one day that you haven't yet? Ooh, a dream role? Yeah. Or gig or a, a, just a dream. Do you have a dream still? <laughs> <laughs> uh do, do you dream yeah do you dream seth is there still hope in your eyes i just just wake up and go through the motions <laughs> yeah i got rid of that a long time ago <laughs> if you don't dream you don't disappoint yourself <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, right. that's awful uh, <laughs> no no um incorrect there's like different answers i can give to this right okay. like a dream role, a dream role and i don't know if it's like a specific role sure I would, I would love to be, and I know I'm different, but like this, 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 uh, actor's roles, like all these roles just clicked with me. And I know the portrayals would be different, but I'm like, just what he he was offered. I'm like, yeah, man, that's, that's my bag of chips right there. Yeah. And one movie in particular, but I would love the roles Robin Williams plays. Ooh, yeah. Especially hook oh dude that that portrayal of peter pan has it's it's timeless to me you know because you you agreed to watch that movie when it came out and we were little babies Uh uh-huh that movie meant something completely different to me than what it means now you know sure and like even uh my wife and I are trying for children currently. Not currently, that'd be inappropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> you took a break. <laughs> it's too small. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, we're trying for children, and just you know, just just his like his his struggle as a father. Yeah. Like wow, wow, and I don't, and I don't know if it's always been because I'm a perpetual child or because I have taught children, whether it was martial arts or gymnastics or like especially when i taught those kids you know one of my things about never giving up on my dreams is like especially especially if you if you teach a child and they're they're really really young you know you're just there doing a job right but you have no idea the lasting impacts that like 
one sentence or or one day made to the development of this child totally you know which is a you know it's a, it's a double-edged sword you know it could it, it it shapes them in the direction it's supposed to right and one of the things i've always wanted to do for these kids and like even though like you know so a lot of these kids are grown up some of them are adults now but for me to never stop trying because if you know even like 25 year old johnny made up name right Uh 25 year old johnny finally sees me in something and they go oh my gosh that's coach seth yeah you know i hope to show them they can do it keep going you you knew me as 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 goofy coach seth you know and here i am and like i you know uh in hindsight, I don't know how many times I said it, but I'm like, you know, keep going for it. Like, well, my mom, well, my mom taught me and everything, you know, you want it, work for it, go for it. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta dig through and do it. And like, if I could be without trying to put more pressure on myself than what's already there as an actor, right? If I could prove to them that it's possible. Whoosh. Yeah. Make my day, baby. That'd be awesome. I love that. And then, and then, and so then back to Robin and, you know, his, his films and those characters, you know, Hook and Patch Adams. Oh, man. Like uh, Jack. Yeah. All of these like very strong child motivated movies. Right? Yeah. But not, but, the, but those stories aren't necessarily for children. Yeah. They're not dumbed down at all. Yeah. And I'm like, th- th- like, so like those roles are what, that would be a, a really great dream for me to to happen. What a cool answer. I've asked that question definitely more than once, and I don't think I've had that <laughs> thoughtful of an answer. That's really cool. I, I've, I've thought about that. You know? I like I, that. I thought about that when I was teaching the gymnastics. Like, it was a simple thing. It was a motivator, right? Yeah. Like, hey, man, just, it was a motivator for, and it, probably even when I, like, I came up with it, I didn't realize how truthful it was to me. Right. You know, until I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is this is important to me. And then and then when I have children of my own, you know, it, and it's kind of funny, like, a, what is it? I just heard a, an interview with Paul Rudd where like, I, I guess his kids didn't know what he did for movies. Right? <laughs> and, and, and like and like his children saw, you know, like a, a cardboard cutout or a poster of him like in the movie theater. And they just thought he worked at the movie theater. <laughs> and you know and it took some time for like oh you know like like when when that's just the kid's life you know it's like oh yeah it's not it's not special but like like for the kids that like knew me as not that like and by kids i mean like they'll be they'll be adults right you know but like even even to you know to to make it worth it to everyone's child at heart yeah there we go that's a cool thing i think if you're not already there you are absolutely on that path I'm going. Well, and then like the more the more you're in the industry, the more you demystify it, right? Yeah. So like uh to to a lot I know explaining to every family member who's not in the entertainment industry, we live in a fantasy job. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like everyone's if not second but third question is, right, but when are you going to get a real job, you know? Uh-huh. And like which is totally valid, right? Cuz I'm sure, I'm sure we've all started our journey in entertainment with that lights and glamour. This is what I'm striving for. And then eventually, and I, I don't know, I, th- I think it may sound like, sound like I'm downplaying it, but like I I've learned it, it helps me. It's like, eventually it's not lights and glitter and glamour. It's just a job. Right. It's, it's just a job. And, and that's awesome to me that it's just a job. Like me as an adult, Having a job to me means security. Yeah, it's uh, it means people value what I do. That's you know, I was in one acting class, mind you, I was the only adult in a child's acting class, so <laughs> this note wasn't necessarily for me, but I took it as for me, and I was like, this doesn't this doesn't resonate with me, and then, right. Oh, right? Because I'm not seven, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but like the note was like, you know, you like. You have an audition. You're scared of an audition. You're thinking of it as a job, you know, even in your calendar. And like, I was like, oh, you're talking to some pretty tech savvy kids here. They have calendars now? But every child knows how to work Zoom better than us now. So facts. Absolutely you just, true. You just gotta get over <laughs> but like you got to market in your calendar as playtime, as fun time, as part as party. And I was like, yeah, that that sounds nice. Sure. 
And so like, I'm going through my calendar and like every audition uh, sparingly as they are, I'm like, okay, it's not a, it's not a job. It's playtime, which eventually I was like, but I like having a job. Right. Yeah. I would like it to be a job though. <laughs> yeah, having a job's cool. I like, I like that. I like that a lot. Let's do that instead. So then I relabeled everything. Probably best. I, yeah. I, well, it's that old adage, right? A uh, dream job is still a job. And there is a technical side. You still got to work. And it's pretty cool to work. Well, and it's like, you know, it, there, there are a ton of really poopy jobs out there that I oh, would yeah. not want to do ever. Even within our industry, you know, switching from, even from switching from like, uh, sometimes like project to project. Oh, yeah. You, you could still be an actor, but just like depending on the environment, how hard the work is, the people. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's it's going to happen. Some jobs are more fun than others. And then it's just, you know, it's just, it's just a job. Yeah. It's just a job. Exactly. Try to have fun with it when you can. Yep. And then you start treating it like a business, right? Yeah. And then, and then that's when, back to my mother, that's uh, uh the, what are you going to do for to work for it, right? Right. That's the, the creating, you know, why Shots with Jeff came in, uh, why creating your own material is important you know because yep and in today's day and age of social media you you can you can be literally you can be anything you want to do you just got to tell people that's what you got to do or that's what you do and and you got to brand yourself that way right which i i that is something i don't like doing i don't Same. like mar marketing myself i'm you know? very bad at it i mm -hmm. uh, and also i just like and that and that's a job too like i think if you talk to like any real professional influencer like oh for sure that's, that's their job you yeah know? like we we scroll scroll through and we just see you know their their brand being whatever film rating they're presenting uh-huh you know of, of of what their thing is but like they gotta wake up and they gotta plan that and they gotta do it and like why do you think they look so good in their shoots because they got lighting and they got you know <laughs> the right felt like this like ugh and I'm like I don't I don't want to do that I'd rather kind of basically do the same thing but like for like a movie movie or yeah. like short that could turn into a movie my my wife and I and uh our director uh Jason Milner are working on a proof of concept which will cool. be will be our our biggest production to date which Hell is yeah a terrifying thing and then I I am choosing selective compartmentalization. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> like, I understand this scares me, but I'm not going to let it bother me right now. Go on to the back of the brain. You there know? you go. I'll save you for the journal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, you got you got to do it. And then this opens in the very beginning of this. You're like, did you always know you wanted to be an actor? And I was like, you know, it started off as like a big funnel of, you know, this direction. Uh-huh. You went very specific, you know, went to, you were an actor so much to the point to where I was turning down stunt work, right. And going and going very broke, very quick. And then, and now I'm kind of widening this back out. And then even to contradict myself to the plan I presented my mother of, I'm not doing a plan B uh, because it will take away from my plan. A is yeah. I still don't believe in plan B. I just believe in multiple plan A's. Yeah. You know, ev everything that I'm doing from acting on camera to voiceover to motion capture to, you know, shot shots with Jeff to the, the writing to the sock puppets, right? Yeah. All of them are different lanes on the same highway going north. Absolutely. You know, and they, they and they all help each other. They do. But, like I've had um and I'm not I'm not looking for like millions of s subscribers or views which would be nice but like sure. that, that's not my goal, right? I'm not looking for the masses. I'm uh, I'm not looking for, you know, like like millions of eyes. I'm looking for the right set of eyes to right. to see what I do. And like I I've I've had examples of this already where I've, you know, even with our little shorts, I've just sent it to directors I've worked with and then uh, when I do work with them again, they'll be explaining a scene and they'll go like, well, you're a filmmaker. You'll know when to do it. And, yeah. and they only get, I, was like, I was like, whoa, that like I just relieved them of having to explain this to me because of this short I shot. Yeah. 
they go, oh no, Seth, Seth knows. He he knows the responsibility of this and, and when to feel it out and when to find it. Like he knows. And I'm like, whoa, I just uh I was just making noises for action. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but cool. That's awesome. Yeah, another tool for the toolbox. Another tool in the toolbox. And then just uh, you know, there's there's plenty of actors, and the world is different than what it was then, but there's plenty of actors who have blown up just making their own stuff. Yeah, it's true. You know? Uh, them, uh, them Goodwill Hunting guys. I hear. I know. They did pretty okay. Yeah, they did all right. <laughs> and, all are, and all of us are looking to to make the next Goodwill Hunting, right? Exactly. That's what it is. We're all looking to do that, and and that's where it goes. Uh, uh, Arthur, it's like, ah, don't don't try to be the best. Just take the chunks you can manage, and do it the best like you can do. Yeah. You know? Do you? Do do, but do you? You know, you don't have to make Goodwill Hunting. You can. You can make a short with with your dogs, yeah, and, and like, and you can learn from it. And then your next one's better, and then your next one's better, and you keep going, and then you have the next Goodwill Hunting, and then you have the next Goodwill Hunting. But your own, your own. I I like that. I like that a lot. I like that stuff. I love that you're out there doing the thing. It's been a joy to watch it all. Just, I'm really, I'm really happy for you. Genuinely, you you you're out there for, killing it, man. I'm, you know, it's uh, it's just my job now. It's just my job. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, dude, we've been talking for over an hour and a half. Look at that. I, I know. I was, like, I was like, hey, man, how long is I was like, this is fun. Uh, before I release you back into the wild, I got to ask, where can people find your stuff? Where can they find you? Talk to me. So, so I guess I plug the uh, uh, social medias. Here. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> uh, you can find my Instagram at Seth Allen Austin, spelt my my mother, uh, <laughs> S E T H, and then it's A L L Y N. Pretty cool. A U S T I N. Yeah, thanks. She wanted to give me a CEO's name. <laughs> uh, I was like, or an actor. Yeah, it's cool too. Yeah. There's already a Seth Allen Austin, but his Allen's different. You know? Yeah, his Allen's different. He's, he's got to go. Uh, yeah, gone. Um, you can also find Jenny and I shots with Jeff YouTube at just, you know, look shots with Jeff, spelled J E T H, Jeff, like it's, a, it's our Bragellina, you know? Love it. And then, you know, keep playing video games. Chances are I'm in there somewhere. Yeah, you are. And killing it or being killed. The amount of times that it's happened both ways is probably higher than we all think. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find my demos, short films, and a bunch of other really fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to pick you up some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases of the show, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Daryl, Daz, Ben, and Chris. Your support means so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.